Welcome to Brahms annual meeting. I'm so glad to see everybody here in person. And I can see your faces, no mask, and you're sitting elbow to elbow. It's wonderful. Um, just a few comments uh, about this past year, and then I want to turn it over to Lee Carroll for a little bit. Um, just want to talk a little bit about what we've been doing during COVID. I know uh, when COVID first started, someone said to me on the golf course last year, well, you're not having to do very much over there at Brom, are you? <laughs> and I, I was like, well, I really don't know how to answer that. Because I've been just so busy. <laughs> but um, basically, you know, we kind of give um, a hats off to Lee Carroll and the employees here, the staff. I mean, when COVID happened and we had to shut down, they put this museum up online in no time at all. They really put, took the museum to people's homes. And Lee Carroll and I were still trying to figure out how to, you know, unmute ourselves on, <laughs> on Zoom, and they already had the whole museum up online. So really just got to give uh, uh, hats off to the staff. For this <laughs> and uh, the board should also give themselves a, a pat on the back because we worked really hard during the past year to be ready to go when um, the pandemic was deemed over. <laughs> I, sometimes I think we did too much work because it feels like we've been shot out of the cannon. <laughs> and we're going at warp speed and um, I just can't wait for you all to see what happens this year with uh, all of our committees. Our membership is back going strong and we actually have growth in that area now. We're uh, going to be introducing a new endowment legacy program in the coming year. Um, our education department has grown, we've got funding, we've added a new staff person. It's just exciting to see what's going on here behind the scenes, not even counting the wonderful exhibits that we have right now. Um, we're grateful for all your support, continued support. Um, really sad to see some board members terms finished, but really excited for the new board. And with that, I am going to turn it over to Lee Carroll, our executive director. I'm going to briefly introduce all the staff, um, not all of whom are here. I didn't require that people come today, but you need to know the names even if you don't know their faces, and I'll be talking more about them later. And this does feel like church, you know, where the front row is totally empty and it's totally full as you go back. Um, so I'm going to do this down the staff roster, so it's in alphabetical order. Um, Mark Brackville is our facilities manager. You will never see Mark. We don't see Mark. I think he works from like 2 in the morning to 5.30 or 6. But the toilet paper gets folded, so we know he's been here. Um, Sharon Caldwell's in the back of the room. She's our office manager. Um, Cameron Collier is one of our summer uh, front desk people. She would have been downstairs when you got here, probably at the round table. Um, Steve Eichner, I saw earlier. Um, not as elusive as Mark, He's <laughs> but he can pop up at any time, anywhere. He is um, our registrar and works very closely with our curator. Maggie Flanagan is our marketing director. Jennifer Garancic is our Education Center Director. Katie Jensen is our new Education Outreach Person, and she's been on the job two and a half weeks, I think. Um, Jasmine McFadden, back of the room, um, Executive Assistant, everybody knows her, and if you don't, once you're on the board, you really know Jasmine, because she's your main point of contact. Um, Diane Pavarsky is another front desk person. She's during the week. Um, Sonia Smith is another weekend front desk person. And Willard Watson, Programs and Outreach and Videographer Extraordinaire. And Gabe Wilson at the back, our new curator um, of exhibitions and collections. 
So I'm gonna let Sandy do trustees and then I'll do a little more with the annual report. Well, we want to acknowledge uh, some folks that are going off the board this year. Um, Cindy Milner, uh, Don Hubble, and Bo. <laughs> <laughs> Sure. You know, Brom is a working board, as you guys very well know. So uh, when you come on the Brom board, you're expected to bring your time, a lot of it, your talent, and your treasures. And um, these people have done that during their terms. Cindy has served two terms, so that's six years. Um, she has been awesome with our gift shop brings in quite a bit of prof profit for the museum now she has served on numerous kind of committees <laughs> we joke it's the committee that you check into but you can never check out <laughs> <laughs> she has donated meals from her restaurants for volunteers she's just an all-around uh, awesome board member, awesome friend, and awesome lady. So let's give it <laughs> And Dawn, um, I wish he was here today so he could hear me speak so nicely about him. <laughs> <laughs> Don, um, he's always ready to take on any project you ask him to do. He has never turned me down, not only been here a year, but, and he's very thorough in anything that he has set out to do. And um, the, the main thing I'm going to say about Don is whenever we've been faced with a, a, a decision here, he has certainly made us all think from every angle before we made that decision, and that, that that has been good for us, and uh, Don's an awesome guy. He's also been key in um, on our finance committee and making sure our investments were where they needed to be, and that has turned out very nice. So a hand for Don. <laughs> now to Bo. Bo has served two terms. And his last term, all three years, president of the board. Now, I've only been here a year, and I now know <laughs> what that actually means. And it is um, a lot of time, um, a lot of dedication, and a lot of love for this organization. Uh, you know, he's had many advancements of this museum during his term, with the crowning jewel being the Cone exhibit in 2019. And probably his only mistake was putting me in and then COVID happened. <laughs> <laughs> and even after six years of uh, commitment, Bo is still serving us. He, he's kept me straight this past year as President Emeritus. He is chairing one of our 10th anniversary events, the Founder event, and he is taking on the decorations for the upcoming gala, and he will chair our search committee for our new executive director when Lee Carroll retires. I think it's safe to say that Bo loves all things wrong. We thank you for your dedicated service and um, to Brom, to the community, you are truly valued, and we love you. And in your honor, a president fund has been established. We are already receiving gifts for that fund, all of which will go toward our endowment. So let's give a big, big hand. Nelson, Chris, 
Linda Gilliland, Sue Glenn, Miriam Kimsey, Eric Overcash, Marianne Poole, and Jean Wilkerson. We also have three uh, board members who are going to rejoin us for a second term. Yay. Joe Coyne, uh, Jess Weirman, and Lee Rockamora. Yay. Let's give them a Now I'd like to introduce our new board members, and we're going to start with uh, Dan McClam. Uh, he comes to us from Raleigh. He practiced law for 40 years in Raleigh, and he's one of only a handful of lawyers in North Carolina who has been admitted to uh, fellowship in three leading national societies for litigation. So he will definitely be keeping us. <laughs> <laughs> In the past, I'm trying to get out of that. <laughs> in the past, he has served on the Visual Arts Exchange Board of Advisors in Raleigh. Dan and his wife Bonnie have been in Blowing Rock since 2016. They have four sons and daughters-in-law and five grandchildren. Yay! Our next uh, member is Brent. Brent Moore. Yay! Brent is a native of North Carolina. He grew up in Lexington and visiting Blowing Rock as a child. Uh, with his parents and grandparents. He's a real estate broker here in town with uh, Burr Collier Real Estate. He is an amateur artist and collector of art and pottery. His community service includes Triangle United Way Art Curator for the Raleigh LGBT Center and recently serving on the Membership and Recreation Committee at the Country Club. Brent and his husband, Tim, have three children and four grandchildren. Organizations that benefit children and families have been her focus as a volunteer for 35 years. She was born in Cuba to Spanish parents and grew up in Central Florida. Her and Brian still live there. Pope New Museum of Art at Florida Southern was her first board involvement and she is still involved as a member and part of the Art Trust Committee. They've been homeowners here since 2000. They have two children and four grandchildren. Charlotte, North Carolina. She spent a lot of summers at Blow and Rock throughout her life. And after practicing as a clinical psychologist for 10 years, she retired to pursue her passion as figurative sculpture. Over the last four decades, she has enjoyed a career of portrait sculpture, creating commissioned bronze portraits for individuals and galleries throughout the South. Uh, she has loved her involvement with Braun already. She has been uh, either a chair or co-chair of the gala for three years. She and her husband Jim now enjoy traveling, playing golf, entertaining, and collecting art. And Jim has been a former board member here as well. So we welcome an artist to our board today. <laughs> Sandy, and thanks to everyone for both past service, uh, current service, and service that's about to begin. So I'm um, really glad to see everybody. Um, I think one of the best summations of how we approach the pandemic, I heard from my uh, granddaughter as she was entering preschool a few months ago, and she, I said, how did it go? And she goes, I did art. I cried, and then I was brave. Well, I think that's what we did last year from COVID. We did our, we cried, and then we were brave. Um, and I think it paid off. We, we actually had a good year. Um, middle of last year, I never would have guessed that we would be able to present a positive annual report. If you don't have one, pick one up. It looks pretty darn good. Um, look through it there is a lot to be proud of it reinforces what we already know that we have a strong museum we entered the pandemic strong and that helped us greatly 
In spite of being required to be physically closed for six months, we stayed vibrant. We kept our staff fully employed. We did not touch our cash reserves or investments. We were gifted over 1,500 hours of volunteer support. We created strong virtual programming and strong community outreach. How? Sandy jokes about being the pandemic president, but she and the executive committee gave strong leadership to the museum and she touched on the board's role in our success also. The board and its committees continued to meet and got and guide Brom through the year. Our members, we did lose members last year, but not many. Most people renewed their memberships in spite of us being closed for half the year, and almost all of our society level members maintained their same level, level of giving. Our donors, our fundraisers were all canceled, but they still raised significant income for the museum thanks to many generous donations and designated gifts and so many people donating their ticket that they had already paid for. I'm touched by the generosity of our supporters, including every one of you in this room. Our staff, Sandy touched on the staff, but they are a big part of our success. You have a staff that showed nimbleness, creativity, and leadership. Sharon, who you were introduced to earlier, at the beginning of the pandemic had to get everything ready for us to work remotely. And all the software upgrades, putting, you know, making sure everything was stored in the cloud and all of that. If that wasn't enough, she managed all the federal grants and loans, which were a big part of our success last year. Um, and that might be seen as somewhat easy, except that they changed the rules about every three or four days. And so you never knew if you were still eligible to be forgiven or if you could still apply or if you couldn't apply. Um, we did receive PPP money. We received an idle loan. And um, we've also received the um, tax credits, the ERTC, Employee Retention Tax Credits. Um, all thanks to Sharon's hard work and paying attention to that. And our payroll protection from last year has been forgiven. So that is now a grant, not a loan. Um, she also, on top of that, managed a database conversion from a database that we had definitely outgrown to one that much works much better for us. but. If anyone's ever worked with the database conversion, there's nothing simple about it. And she and Jasmine have both shown real leadership in that. And they sort of cringe any time I ask for a new report. It's like, okay, yeah, we'll figure that one out. But, <laughs> but they've done a great job. And my hat's off. Jasmine um, managed all of our fundraisers. And yes, they were canceled. But they were canceled for a long time. So we're planning an event. And here's what we do if we cancel. And here's what we do if we can have half capacity. And here's what we do. Who do we call? When do we call? Managed um, getting refunds from our vendors for those things. Um, and keeping people engaged and then manage the fund to need on top of that. And with the board active throughout the year, she continued to do all the board relations. And she manages membership. <laughs> so. Um, those strong membership numbers are a large part due to the work that Jasmine does behind the scene in keeping um, those notifications going out and people connected. Willard, who's at the back of the room, led the creation of our virtual programming. Not only did he lead that, he became our chief videographer. He decided we needed more equipment. He wrote the grants for us to get new equipment and on top of that wrote up over $16,000 worth of successful grants for both programming and the equipment upgrades that we have at the museum. Jennifer um, came up with the art kit idea. And if you haven't read about that, we twice gave art kits to every child, kindergarten through third grade in the first round and kindergarten through fourth grade in the second round. When those children went home for the rest of the school year, Within a month, they all had a really substantial kit of art supplies with instruction on three or four different activities to do with that. And because every child had them, the teachers could incorporate those materials into their lesson plans. And then we repeated it again in um, 
the fall, all of that funded by the Kennedy Herderick Foundation. Then she also did instructional videos, which have had a very broad reach and continue to be accessed quite regularly, with a lot of teachers using them in their remote teaching. Um, when they're not an art teacher, and even ones who were disseminating Jennifer's teaching to their students. She also managed a successful plein air festival, which um, we were able to have last year. Steve um, managed much of the changeover of exhibits. He reorganized our vault and our collection. He managed our conversion of collection software to cloud-based and improved our record keeping. He also, as I said earlier, does anything else that's needed to. Courtney, who left to become a teacher last year, but was our marketing person, before she left, totally redesigned our website and went from a platform that was very cumbersome to manage to one that's much easier to manage on our end and to manage on your end. So, huge. Maggie, our new marketing, um, staff person arrived mid-closure and yet kept our strong connection to our members and donors and managed our marketing, continues to manage our marketing. Diana, our former curator, curated five exhibitions and readjusted our exhibition calendar as our mandated closures kept being extended and exhibits had to keep changing deadlines. She also successfully um, delivered a little fellow into her family last year and he was healthy after a very challenging pregnancy, so that was exciting. Mark repainted every gallery in the building and many of the public spaces we did use last year to do some facility upgrades. We improved our conference um, rooms, we moved offices into the old conference room. Uh, we we're still waiting on some lighting upgrades there to take place, but we really took advantage of being closed to do things that you can't do when you're open. Each of us were able to take advantage of the strange year and do things we never would have time to get to or add in a typical year. New skills were learned, programming was broadened, and oddly enough, it was a year of growth. We all had a challenging year. Yet through it all, your museum was 